Genie Wally, my proof that God is imaginary. This is a video I made a while ago, May 12, 2013. And a very pretty young girl, Shona McCarthy, writes, now Jeannie, Jeannie Wiley, Jeannie is not her real name, that's the name that she's known by. It's a little girl who was born, probably they, they think she might have been um, mentally handicapped. And rather than trying to nourish her, okay, trying to nourish that child to help her reach the, her best potential, her father locked her in a room, tied her to a potty chair. So she was either in a potty chair with her arms tied to the, to the, to the arms of the chair, or she was in a straight jacket in a crib with a, with a, with a, with a, with mesh over the top. Her windows, her windows were covered. She couldn't look out and nobody could look in. The room was pretty much devoid of anything to spark a child's imagination. She was there from early toddlerhood until I believe she was 13, 12, 13 years old when she was finally rescued. She never really learned how to talk. When she walked, she was still kind of sort of in that position that she was that, that formed her bones sitting in the potty chair. She's now a little older than me. She's in a home for the mentally handicapped. As far as I know, she never learned to speak. She never had the life that she might have had because she was so badly crippled by this 12 year, or 12 year ordeal in this room tied to chairs, to little tiny potty chairs or a straight jacket straight jacketed inside of a baby's grip. Mockingbird Don't Sing is a very good movie. If you if you can find it, it's very hard to find. It's it's um it's an old DVD. And it depicts her story. Anyway I made a video because I think that her story is proof that there's no such thing as God. From the comments I've received on this video, it's very clear that the point was not, did not even remotely penetrate the minds of any Christians who have watched it. And Christians have watched it because clearly it's not, it's not, it's not obviously an atheist video. Well, it is sort of proof there's no God. I guess, I guess I just, I don't know why they watch it. Anyway, this, this pretty girl writes me. Funny, when I first watched all those documentaries about Jeannie Wiley, my first impulse was to hope that she could have the love of God in her life and to pray for her. You know, I won't even say what I think of that. Somebody else wrote me a couple months ago. God could prevent this from happening by taking away our free will. With good comes evil. I don't like that comment because there is no free will. I wrote, except there's no such thing as free will. You can't have both a divine plan and an all-knowing God who can see the future. Created by a God that knows everything and sees the future and free will. The two notions contradict each other. If this God is what Christians claim he would know, even before we are born, every thought we would think, every decision we will make, and ultimately where we are destined to end up when we die. In fact, those of us born predestined to go to hell, that's part of his divine plan too. What a sadistic monster is this God. This guy, Spiffy Penguins, writes back, No, he gives us paths to follow. I didn't even read this until this morning I wrote, and he knows ahead of time, before we are even born, which path we will take, and has even built a perfect divine plan around our predestined choices. 
this um, other person writes me, why do you use genie to prove God is not real? God is real. You know, when you say that, you just want to get kind of a glassy, glazed over expression and just kind of go, God is real. He is not what you think he is. And you know this how? You know, all the, the only thing you have as proof of your God is a fictional book. It's fictional because there's nothing to prove that, it, that any of it's real. It's fictional because the characters, there's no evidence for the characters, or at least most of the characters in the book. Uh, let's see, I wrote. A lot of these comments I didn't know existed until I got to it today. The fictional biblical God is a monster. If you have even one shred of recreatable, testable, verifiable proof or evidence your sky wizard exists, Google James Randi and go claim the million dollar prize for this one shred of actual evidence he's been publicly offering for years. Anyway, I like what this guy wrote. This is this is something that, um, again, I just read this morning. Remember, if you are a Christian, not only do you have to accept that God permits this to happen, he's talking about Jeannie Wiley's story, but you actually would have to praise and celebrate him for doing so. Because it was part of his divine plan. I like it. He actually writes part of its divine plan, which is kind of how I see this monster, too. So remember that, Christians. The next one of these stories you see, just think to yourself, how great is our God? There is no recon reconciling the Epicurean problem of evil with the Abrahamic faiths. That problem dismantles that entire belief system and is a very simple logical problem. Anyway, so that's just stuff from my phone. I have a hard time with how blind Christians are. It's like, you know, you could show them. I had a video I put up yesterday showing ugly pictures of people who didn't receive the love and mercy of the, of the, of the biblical, well, I won't say biblical because Christian's God is not biblical, of the Christian God. They did not receive that wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling, and they did not get saved by, by this God in their time of need. This woman writes, oh, you know, I just want to pray for Jeannie. You know, that's a little late. Actually, Jeannie should not have had to require prayer to be helped. This God should not have required people pray for Jeannie to help her. He should have simply helped her. He should have helped her when she was a little tiny toddler and it was still possible to help her in any meaningful way. He should have helped her, you know, if there's such a thing as the Mormons think, Mormons think, I'm pretty sure it's the Mormons, that we are spirit babies. Before we are born, we live with God as spirit babies. Well, shoot, they could have, that wonderful, loving God could have put her in some other family. Why Why put her, at that little innocent spirit baby, into such a predicament as he did? Oh, I'm sure that it's part of his divine plan that an innocent child should suffer. I'm sure that some good came from it. But it certainly wasn't good for Jeannie. It's kind of like this, the invention of Satan, God's little, little minion, Satan. You know, I'm sure some good comes from... God creating Satan and putting Satan on the planet. You know, the fact that he runs around and he causes all this bad stuff to happen to the planet and we blame him, not his creator. You know, that's all really sad. Lots of people die. Lots of people get killed for, for, being, for all the wickedness. But it doesn't help those people. Whatever good comes from Satan's antics on the planet that God has outlined for him to do, as part of his job and purpose for being created. What good does it do the people that die because of him? Not much. Maybe there's some greater good out there, but it sure doesn't help those people that suffer because of him. Just like whatever greater good came from Jeannie having to be, having her life utterly and permanently crippled, 
Hasn't helped Jeannie very much, has it? I'm sorry, but in my opinion, if there is such a thing as a God, and he was even remotely this loving Father in Heaven that Christians like to spout off about, he would have helped this innocent, helpless little this little girl. He would have fucking helped her before it was too late. And he wouldn't have sat back requiring people to pray really hard to, to motivate him to get off his fat ass and do something about it. He wouldn't have waited around for that. He would have helped her. He would have said, he would have struck this evil man who was doing this to Jeannie fucking dead. That would have been the easiest road because then the mother, bereft of her um, support, she was blind. The mother was almost blind and afraid of this man. If he had been struck dead with a heart attack, if I mean, that is certainly within the power of this mighty God. She would have had to go out a lot sooner. In the end, she did go out. She ventured out. When she figured out that this man wasn't going to help Jeannie, now that Jeannie had reached a certain age that he had said she would have to reach before he would help her, she took Jeannie to get help herself. If he had died, you know, when she was like three or four of a, of a heart attack, mom would have had to take the kids in tow and gone to social security or whatever, and this would never have happened. The story would never have happened. Jeannie would have just been one more little girl or boy born with a mental handicap, a mental, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how. What is the politically correct way challenge? Who, who, you know, goes to special schools and gets, you know, the, the physical therapy or whatever it is that she needs, the speech therapy, whatever it is that she needs to live as full and normally a life as possible. Instead, she's locked away like an animal until her bones pretty much form into the shape of somebody sitting down in a potty chair. I don't know if she still walks like she, like she did when she was 12 and 13, but when she walks as a 12 and 13 year old, if you watch the clips of her, she's still, you know, um, anyway. So I just thought I'd make a quick video after watching, watching or reading these comments on my video. It just floors me how Christians can see the ugliness that this God allows to happen. Pictures like I showed yesterday. And it doesn't sink in. They just, they're like little blank automatons, if that's the word. I'm, I'm trouble. I think I have the right word, but I'm not saying it right. You know, this is what they are. And they just go around like this. And nothing penetrates. Nothing. They say God is all powerful. And he doesn't do a fucking thing. They say God is merciful and kind and loving and compassionate and just. And he doesn't do a fucking thing. So, I'm sorry. Somebody wrote me on my channel and said that, you know, it's really hard for people in 50 or in the, in the ballpark of age 50 or older to wake up from this delusion. I think it's probably true. I think the older you are, the more time you've invested in the delusion, the harder you cling to it. You know? Tooth and nail. Because holy shit, if you find out when you're old that your entire life has been about fucking praising something that not only doesn't exist but is evil if it did exist, it's really a hard pill to swallow. I was in my mid-40s. And I do agree that probably the older you are, the harder it is. I don't think it's impossible, though. I don't think it's ever impossible. So, anyway, there's hope for everybody. And But it does make me sick to see people that can look evil and, and cruelty in the face. Or indifference. As a lot of those pictures of my, in my video yesterday just show complete indifference to people. 
they can see they can see all that and still walk around like this little happy person. Yeah, God is so good. God loves us. God provides for us. Bullshit. Your God is a monster. <laughs>